Hi guys, welcome to a tips, tricks and fundamentals when sewing into paper. After doing my collage demonstration and throughout doing some of my sewing with the machine onto different styles of paper, I thought it would be good just to share a few little tips and tricks with you all. Now, when using a sewing machine, one of the first things you will find when you actually sew into paper is that you are going to find that your needle is going to get dulled by the process. It's not quite like fabric, it will literally make that needle much blunter over a period of time. So first things first, what size needle should we suggest? Well, after looking at a few blog spots and a few posts, I would suggest a size 16. This is sort of come out as possibly it's more towards a heavy duty. Fine needles start at around about size 8, going all the way to size 19. So try and stick to a size 16. If you are going to go for much heavier layers, I mean 16 will be a lovely needle for sewing into denim anything up to 19 then you really are in the most heavy duty needle that you can actually get when you get your needle and you dedicate it how about thinking about putting a little bit of nail polish onto the shaft that way when you take the needle out and you want to use the sewing machine for fabric you can always pick that needle up so much easier because you've already marked it with a piece of nail polish now, you'll see me here going through the video, I am using a zigzag stitch. I would suggest that you do some practicing and you keep your stitch lengths really long. If you use a really short little stitch and you will possibly find that your paper, once you've sewn in it, it will just literally piece the paper and make it tear because all you're doing is putting real small little holes into your work. Before you get started I would suggest that you use probably the best thing for me has always been using 100% cotton and I always find that I make sure that my bobbin is completely full of cotton it's really full ready to go top and bottom I will use the same thread if possible when using paper you will find that it does pick a little bit of the bottom bobbin thread up and produce it and share it with you on the top so you could think about having invisible thread if need be if you don't want to see anything from the bottom coming up to your paper but if you stick to 100% cotton and also remember you don't want your bobbin to run out halfway through a piece of work not on your project the reason being that the needle once it pierces the paper it's leaving fine holes as a permanent it's not like fabric you can't actually go back you can sew over the top if you do make a mistake but it would be advisable that if you start with a full bobbin you're not going to have that as a problem tension you can find that a lot of these machines these days have auto tensions and that is perfectly fine but you will as you can see in the work that I'm sharing here I'm just coming up to a corner and I didn't have my tension set originally that well and so it has really pulled on the corner and I'm now going back I've you just can sometimes you have to fuss a little if you don't have an auto tension you may have to adjust yours just to find what is going to work for your machine each machine is individual as you can see i went about putting an awful lot of different pieces of paper down onto my piece of work and to do that i actually used a glue stick now when using maybe a little bit of tacky tape or glue you want to try and avoid using your sewing machine. You don't really want it to sew through the gunk because it will go up the shaft of the needle and cause a little bit of difficulty. But I must admit, I haven't found it to be too much of a problem, so I will quite happily sew through. Just a small amount of tape is all that's required. Now we're coming to actually finishing the piece of work majority of my work I don't go around knotting and pulling up all the threads but on this occasion I am going to pull up the thread I'm going to knot this off and so 
I'm going to make the knot at the back. I'm just going to pull. That will bring the thread from the top through. So I can just see a little loop. I'm going to pull that top thread now through. So I've got the top and the bottom thread on the same side of paper. And I literally am going to knot this twice. And once that is knotted, I can then cut the thread. But you can choose to just put a little bit of tape runner and put your threads if you're going to put backing on because this is going to be for my collage journal and I'm actually going to put a backing in a second across this work. We're not going to see it in this demonstration. This purely is for the sewing. Well, hopefully I have shared a few hints and tips on the fundamentals of sewing. There is certainly more than what I can offer you here. We are just looking here at the back of my work. I have done a crisscross pattern on my collage. And this is the collage that I done a demonstration on. And this is the sewn end results. So guys, I hope that you've appreciate that. And my next stage will be to put a backing on and actually cut this down ready for a journal cover. And I do hope that if you've got any questions, just leave them in the comments bar and I will do my uttermost to make sure that I answer them to the best of my ability. And most of all, go out there and enjoy sewing. Catch you later, guys. Bye-bye.